But it is preaching time now, um, and so I don't know if it's customary to stand in the house for the reading of the word, and I apologize in advance to the multimedia ministry. I see you all in the back. I did take change the verses just a bit, um, just slightly, but I'm coming from 2 Samuel uh, chapter 9, verses 1 through 11. And I should have prayed before I had y'all stand up, so give me a minute. God, we ask right now that you would just guide us right now in this word. Father, sit Katrina down so that the people would not see me, but that they would see thee. We ask God that we don't take it lightly to stand behind this sacred desk. And so I thank you, God, for the opportunity. But God, we pray that someone's life is changed. Someone who walked in here with their head down would be able to leave with their head held high. We just ask that you would be with us now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and say amen. 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 And so I'm coming from 2 Samuel chapter 9, verses 1 through 11. And I'm reading from what we call the NLT, the New Living Translation but any version of God's word will do, amen? One day, David asked, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He summoned a man named Ziba, who had been one of Saul's servants. Are you Ziba, the king asked? Yes, sir, I am, Ziba replied. The king then asked him, is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Where is, excuse me, yes, Ziba said, one of Jonathan's sons is still alive. He is crippled in both feet. Where is he, the king asked. In Lodivar, Ziba said, told him at the home of Mahir, son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from Mahir's home. His name was Mephibosheth. He was Jonathan's son and Saul's grandson. When he came to David, he bowed low to the ground in deep respect. David said, greetings, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth replied, I am your servant. Don't be afraid, David said. I intend to show you kindness because of my promise to your father, Jonathan. I will give you all the property that belonged to your grandfather, Saul, and you will eat here at my king's table. Mephibosheth bowed respectfully and exclaimed, Who is your servant that you should so show such kindness to a dead dog like me? Then the king summoned Saul's servant, Ziba, and said, I have given you, your master's grandsons, everything that belonged to Saul and his family. You and your sons and servants are to farm the land for him to produce food for your master's household. But Mephibosheth, your master's grandson, will eat here at my table. Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Ziba replied, yes, Lord, my king, I am your servant, and I will do all that you have commanded. And from that time on, Mephibosheth ate regularly at David's table like one of the king's own sons. And before you all take your seat, can you share with your neighbor the title of my message today that God has given us? It is called Blessed by association. I like to put a subtitle, The Blessing of Mephibosheth. Well, I introduced you all to our grandson who just turned 18 years old, woo woo, uh, in July. But um, my husband and I are his legal guardians and we have raised him uh, since he was pretty much one years old. And when it came time to select uh, elementary school and it was time for him to go to kindergarten, um, we started having a conversation with our mom um, who had been a teacher for over 50 years. And she had actually taught over 25 years uh, in the particular school district. And so we were considering having him go to her school district. 
that she retired from. And it was, in fact, it was her suggestion. She wanted him to go to that school district because all of her friends still taught in that school district. So essentially, from the time Isaiah was kindergarten until he got to the fifth grade, my mother had handpicked every single one of his teachers because they were her friends. And in fact, she was actually his substitute teacher when he was in the kindergarten. We'll talk about that part a little bit later. But what happened is we lived in another district. And in order to go to her school district, you have to complete what's called an inter-district transfer. So when you fill out the paperwork, you have to have it approved over here, then you have to have it approved at the district that you're going to. And so we filled out the paperwork and you have to put like who the caregivers are and who's gonna pick the children up and why are you moving and all of that. So we listed because my mother would be picking him up. So I listed her name and so I get to the district and I hand over their paperwork and the secretary at the front desk, she looks at it and she's like, Willie McCoy, is Willie McCoy your mother? I say, yes, Willie McCoy is my mother. Oh my goodness, she taught my son and she taught my sister's son and she taught my cousin's son. Next thing you know, she stamped that paper approved. You see, we realized the blessing, not because of my name, not because of my husband's name, but because of my mother's name. We received a blessing because we were associated with Willie McCoy. And just like our text today, David wanted to bless someone from Saul's family. He asked the question, is anyone in Saul's family still alive? Anyone to whom I can show kindness for Jonathan's sake he wanted to bless someone from Saul's house for Jonathan's sake and one may ask like well what kind of question is that why does he want to bless someone for Jonathan's sake well let me take you back just a little bit can I take y'all back yeah. just a little bit in David's life y'all gonna be with me yeah. and so I, one of my favorite shows, I'm a huge music person, I love TV shows, I love movies. And so one of my favorite TV shows that is no longer on the air is This Is Us. Any This Is Us fans? Amen. All right, I'm good, I'm in the room, I'm in the room. And so one of the things that I believe that This Is Us masterfully did is in telling their stories, they were really good at telling what happened in present day and then going back and letting you see what happened in the past so that whatever happened in the past was reflective of what was happening in the present day and that's why I want to take you back just a little bit in David's life so you'll understand why he's asking this question so if you go back to about first Samuel chapter 20 around verse 14 it says this is a a conversation that is happening between Jonathan and David this is David before he was King David and what happened is Jonathan's father, Saul, wanted to kill David. Jonathan and David were really, really good friends. And instead of siding with his father, Jonathan sided with his friend because he knew what God had ordained. So they devise a plot, some arrows are involved, they have some signals, and so at the end of all of that, Jonathan basically saved David's life. And he, let's peek in on that conversation. And it says, And may you treat me with faithful love of the Lord as long as I live. This is Jonathan talking. But I, if I die, treat my family with this faithful love, even when the Lord destroys all your enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a solemn pact with David, saying, May the Lord destroy all of your enemies. And Jonathan made David reaffirm his vow of friendship again. For Jonathan loved David as he loved himself. You see, David was not aware at the time that he asked that question, is anyone still alive in the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? He really had no idea that anyone was still alive from Saul's family. 
And the reason why he did not know that, because in biblical days, it was customary for the present king to literally wipe out and annihilate everyone from the previous dynasty to ensure that no one could ever challenge him from the throne. Which is why he asked the question, is anyone still alive from the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake? And I just stopped by MacArthur Boulevard to just share three little things. And I'm going to be out y'all's way so y'all could go watch some preseason football. Um, so the first thing I wanted to share is that delayed promises can be fulfilled. Everybody say that. Delayed promises can be fulfilled. Okay, I did share my age, so the sun is beaming and I'm hot, so y'all pray for me, okay? All right. So I'm sure as David was sitting there thinking about that day that his friend and brother had that conversation um, when Saul warned him, when he warned him about Saul's plans to kill him, I'm sure he was just thinking like, man, I made this promise to my brother so many years ago, but I never fulfilled it. So when Ziba responded to David that, yes, Mephibosheth was alive, that was all David needed to hear. The emphasis still alive refers to the fact that David truly did not know that Mephibosheth was alive. And it did not matter how many times David had thought about it. It didn't matter how many years had gone by. The fact was the moment that Ziba said, yes, Mephibosheth is alive. David was like, there's my chance. I can still honor the promise that I made to my dear brother, Jonathan, so long ago. And for my family, I apologize, y'all, but I can't believe this is really about to be my second Larry Fitzgerald reference in like two weeks. I preached a couple of weeks ago and used Larry Fitzgerald. But so Larry Fitzgerald is a former uh, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. And you see, Larry Fitzgerald made a promise to his mother while she was living. He promised her, you know, he left drafted early, abandoned college, but he promised his mother he would get his college degree. And he was quoted as saying that this was a promise 13 years in the making but a promise was still a promise. He earned his college degree, he majored in communication, and the fact that 13 years had passed did not matter. The fact is he kept his promise for his mother. And by sending for Mephibosheth, David kept his promise to Jonathan. It didn't matter how many years had passed, it didn't matter what had happened or anything else, the only thing that mattered was that he kept his promise. And I don't know who I'm talking to in the building, maybe not here, maybe in the choir stand, there may have been a promise that you may have even made to yourself. I'm gonna go back to school, I'm gonna go get my degree, I'm gonna change careers, I'm gonna finally get out of this relationship. You make these promises to yourself, but you're like, I have not honored that. It doesn't matter how many years have gone by, you can still honor your promises. And I also want to just shade, say that the same is with the, if with the God that we serve. His promises are yes and amen. And there have been times that God may have told you a promise some 20 or 30 years ago. But hold on to your faith. Hold on to what God promised you. The simple fact that it was delayed does not mean that it was denied. You hold on to the promises that God has for you. And so when David sent for him he was honoring that promise so that it didn't matter just because it was delayed does not mean that it cannot be fulfilled amen and so not only did i want to share with you all that delayed promises can be fulfilled i need you to hear me on this one the blessings of god will find you I'm gonna say that for one person who didn't really catch it when I said it the first time. The blessings of God will find you. Amen. David asked, where is he? 
he said he is in Lodivar. Lodivar at the home of Mahir, the son of Amiel. So David sent for him and brought him from the home. Mephibosheth was leading an obscure life at the home of Mahir in a place that is opposite of pasture, which is why it's called Lodivar. Means it literally means not a pasture. And when we think of pastures, you always think of the 23rd Psalm, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. He leads me behind, stills waters, right? He talks about those green pastures. This was the opposite of that. Can you imagine a desolate land with no water, no grazing, no nothing? This was the equivalent of like a dry no man's land. And most scholars seem to believe that Mephibosheth was about 20 years old when David's men showed up at his door. And a person who was crippled back in biblical days, especially in this Jewish community, they were not allowed to participate in public life for two reasons. One, because he was crippled. If you think I'm making this up, go back and look, think about all of the biblical stories that had something to do with a person who was lame and or crippled. They weren't allowed to go in the temple. They weren't allowed to worship with the others. So he was not allowed to be in public communication, one, because he was crippled. And how do we know he was crippled? We don't have to take Ziba's word for it. Go back to 2 Samuel chapter 4 because that's where it all got started. It says Saul's son Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth who was crippled as a child. He was five years old when the report came from Jezreel that Jonathan and Saul had been killed in battle. When the child's nurse heard the news, she picked him up and fled and she was in such a hurry as she ran away, she dropped him and he became crippled. That young crippled man probably felt thrown away. He probably felt forgotten. And all of the reasons, another reason why he lived an obscure life is because he thought that the current king probably thought he posed a threat. So he was literally in hiding when these men of David's came and showed up on his door. And I just want to tell anybody here who wants to know that no matter how down you feel, no matter how far you feel you have fallen, does not matter if you feel that you are sitting in a dark place, in a dark side, in a corner all by yourself, sucking your thumb and rubbing your head. It does not matter because the King of Kings can step in and God can step in. And the moment he steps into your dark situation, he brings the light. Life. you do realize that light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place so the moment God steps into your situation darkness has to flee and when God showed up in your circumstances you probably didn't have any hope but once he came in that's why we say he is hope for the hopeless and so I'm so glad that we serve a God who loves us so much that he can reach down from where he is to find us where we are. And some of us may not want to admit it because we real churchy today, but you can imagine you ain't been saved all your life. There were some times that maybe God showed up at the club. I lived in San Jose, but I used to frequent Oakland all the time. I used to go to Jeffrey's Inner Circle. I used to come down here to Silks before I was 21. Amen. And he can find you even in that dark place. Somebody walked in the room as long as the moment I mentioned silks. Amen. Amen. And so I'm so glad it, the Bible is reminding me where it says, who is like the Lord our God? The one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look at the heavens and on the earth. And I just want to say that I said that the blessings of God will find you. And David, King David, in this story, he fully understood that the blessings of God can find you. How do you know, Katrina? I'm glad you asked, Alicia. I'm about to tell you. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, it says, Jesse had seven sons who passed before Samuel. But Samuel said, the Lord has not chosen any of these. So he asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? He said, they're still the youngest, but he is tending sheep out in the land. Samuel said, send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. And once he, arri once he ar arrived, 
Then the Lord said, rise and anoint this one. You see, David was minding his own business, out tending the sheep, writing poems and songs, and probably practicing the harp. He was doing all of these things, and while he was tending the sheep, out in the field, the blessings of God found him. And that is exactly where Mephibosheth found himself today. He was minding his own business, sitting in Lobadar, not bothering anybody when those men came and showed up. He probably thought God had forgotten about him. He was probably like, oh my God, I've hid out here for like 15 years. King David didn't know I existed. Now his men showed up. God's blessings will find you no matter where you are, no matter where you find yourself in life, no matter you could be at the grocery store checking out, you may be at a dead end job, you may have just gotten approved for EDD. By the way, um, when did EDD applications get so complicated? <laughs> Like, you got to go through the pre-interview, then the interview, then the post. Okay, I'm sorry, I digress. You may be somewhere in line trying to find a job. You could be sitting in your room with the blinds down in darkness saying, Lord, you have forgotten about me. Nothing is happening good for me. Wherever you are, the blessings of God will find you. I know I'm not the only one where God reached down and the blessings of God found me. I'm almost ready to get back to, well, I can't even say San Jose. The Lord blessed my husband and I. We just bought a home in Los Banos. Uh, I was kind of depressed because I speak Spanish a little bit, and it didn't even process in my head what Los Banos means. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I'm almost out of here, y'all. But So, the, so I, I, I talked to you about delayed promises being fulfilled. We talked about the blessings of God finding you. This is the last little nugget I wanted to, to leave with you all. Y'all ready? Yes. You got your pen, you ready? <laughs> your present circumstance doesn't define your future. Amen. Your present circumstance doesn't define your future. I will say it again, I am a huge football fan, and if I hadn't been preparing to be with you good saints today, I would have been at that football game yesterday that took place in Santa Clara. <clears throat> but, Frank Gore, Frank Gore, some of you may have heard that name. He's a former 49er running back. He is now staffed in the front office of the 49ers. You see, Frank Gore was initially, when he went in the draft, everyone thought he was initially going to go high, but Frank Gore actually dropped to the third round. The reason why Frank Gore dropped to the third round is because Frank Gore experienced a torn ACL in his left knee during his collegiate athlete days. And that was a reason why Frank Gore dropped so low. But Frank Gore did not allow his present circumstance to determine the type of football player he was going to be. He did not allow a little torn ACL to determine what type of running back he was going to be. And if you know anything about football, you know a running back is one of the hardest jobs in the NFL. They usually have to retire crippled by the time they retire because of the pressure that they put on their legs. And so I just wanted to let you all know that the fact that he dropped to the third round didn't matter. He was not going to allow that to define the type of player he was going to be. So he worked harder and he pushed harder and he always, always, always was pushing and pushing. He pushed so much that he ended up surpassing the great Barry Sanders as the third place all-time running back leader. Go Google it, I'm not making it up. And so I just wanted to tell somebody, if Frank Gore didn't allow his present circumstance to determine his future, that same message is for you today. Think about where Mephibosheth was in Lodabar, someplace that was opposite of a pastor, someplace that was low. He thought 
that he had been forgotten. Here he is hiding and quaking at someone's son's house, but the blessings of God not only found him, but when those men from David's camp showed up, it literally changed his circumstances. He did not allow his present circumstance to ultimately define his future. And we aren't sure why Mephibosheth, if Mephibosheth may have heard any of these stories about his father, Jonathan, and this David, his friend. Um, no one may have even known if he heard that his father actually helped his father, helped David escape the plans of his grandfather. But this friend of his father, the current king, King David, was about to do something unprecedented. He restored all the land of Saul to his grandson Mephibosheth. I don't know who has been living in a dark land in this building, but baby, God is about to restore everything that the enemy took from you. Your present circumstances will not define your future. They may have said you were this. By the way, parents, be careful. Be careful what you put into your children. Be careful what you say to your children. Oh, Ray Ray is bad. No, Ray Ray is active. Or maybe we should stop sparing the rod. All I wanted to say is that if you tell Ray Ray he's bad, Ray Ray will say this is what they labeled me, so I'm going to go on and do that. You have to be careful of what you label. And so he, David, told him from the get, the moment he showed up, he told Mephibosheth, don't be afraid. He told him, don't be afraid, because keep in mind the history, he thought he was brought there for a setup. He thought that the king's men came there to kill him. David said, don't be afraid. I intend to show you kindness because of the promise I made to your father, Jonathan. I am about to give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will eat here with me at the king's table. Many of us have looked at our present circumstance and our present situation and said, that's it for me. This is as far as I can go. It ain't gonna get no better. I'm just stuck in poverty. I'll never own a home. I don't have a degree. I can't go after that type of job. And I'm sure it was the same for Mephibosheth. But a promise between two friends was about to change his future. And same way with God. He does not look at your present circumstance. He doesn't. He doesn't look at your present circumstance as a roadblock. He looks at that as a setup. It doesn't determine what your future is going to look like. And it was a promise that was made by a future king. King David that later changed the life and the lifestyle of that thrown away crippled boy. And the king gave this young man a future. And I'm so glad that even though there was a time that I felt forgotten, there was a time that I saw life passing me by. Everybody else was living their best life. I'm just barely hanging on trying to survive. I'm so glad that there is a king who whispered into my spirit and shared that he would never leave me nor forsake me. Just like how King David made Mephibosheth feel safe and accepted by just one encounter with the king. Can you imagine if you opened up your hearts to the king of kings? Some say he's a burden sharer. Some say he's a heavy load bearer, deliverer, known to set folks free. Some call him the good shepherd. David was a shepherd, but he is the chief shepherd. We call him the Lamb of God, Mary's baby, the Rose of Sharon, the Lord of Lords. I call him my Savior. He is the Son of God and the Son who sacrificed it all, not just for me, but for whoever would believe in him. He sacrificed it for us all. And because of the sacrifice of the Son, we can have a relationship with the Father. We are able to receive the blessings from the Father, not because of us, but because 
because of our association with the Son. And you better believe in order to be blessed by association, you have to be associated. And it was only because of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that we accepted him as our personal Savior that now we have access to the Father. And that is how you can become blessed by association. Can you all indulge me for just a moment and just go to God in prayer? God, we just say thank you. God, we thank you that you didn't leave us where you found us. God, we are so grateful, God, that our humble beginnings and our present circumstances did not dictate our future. We're so glad, God, that we see to the corner, but you see around the corner. God, for every person who has felt left alone, remind them that the blessings of God can find them no matter where it is sitting on a bar stool in a bar no matter where they may be God remind them that your blessings can find them and to every person who thought that God had forgotten about them and made a promise so many decades ago remind the people God that a delayed promise can still be fulfilled that your delay is not a denial that we would hold on because your promises are yes and amen and we just pray that someone would take that message this week and that their heads would be lifted up because they can look to you the king of kings and the lord of lords and it is in the mighty name of jesus that we pray and say amen, amen.